it's hard for me when people talk about how you know we worship a different Jesus or uh, or we don't we're not Christians you know and come to the conference center and look around and and uh, he's, he's the center of everything we're trying to do here All right, everybody, welcome back to Saints Unscripted. Thank you for joining us today. We're not on the set today. We're here with Sister Leonard and Sister Maleri. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. And uh, we are here in front of the beautiful conference center of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We are going on a tour of the conference center today. We have been informed that this likely has never been filmed before. It's very top secret. There are only thousands of people here every year, so this is exclusive access. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, What can we expect from this tour today, sisters? Lots of fun, exciting things to see in the conference center. Mm -hmm. And with that, let's begin. All right, welcome inside the conference center. We are currently diving deep into the belly of the beast but it's a very friendly beast. Think of like Pete's dragon type beast. Okay, so we're going, we're starting at the bottom level. What can we expect to see here, sisters? So we will take you guys into the world's largest front facing auditorium. So we're excited. And this is the one that everybody sees on TV during general conference. Yep, absolutely. And we've also been informed that the stage is actually removable. So we don't even know if it's up right now, but we're about to see. They're doing a little bit of construction right now, and here they're going to be adding some murals of Christ. So that should be done before conference. So if you were to come to conference, you'd go through these doors right into the auditorium to find your seats. And if anybody has seen um, Beauty and the Beast Enchanted Christmas, this organ is much nicer than the one you'll see there. This is the auditorium, so this is the whole purpose for the building actually being built, is this room right here. Mm -hmm. And so we talked a little bit about it before on the walk here, but this building is used for a general conference. This is a very special time and we hear from our modern day prophets and our modern day church leaders. And they share messages that are centered on hope, peace, faith in Christ, and ultimately how to bring your families closer together through Christ's teachings. And so in this auditorium, it seats 21,000 people, but if you can't come in person, that's totally okay. Because most of us actually watch it right at home, um, in our living rooms, wherever we can, because it's broadcasted live. It's broadcasted in over 90 different languages, so people around the world are able to participate. And you don't have to be a member to join in and listen to these messages as well. Would you like to have us take you a little bit closer and you can see the seats behind? The seats behind what? thousand seats. Let's count each one of them. (laughs) That sounds great. Let's do it. You're in charge of counting them. Okay. They are setting up the stage for conference right now. And so they're going to bring out all the chairs and they'll bring out the pulpit a little bit closer to conference time. So we've been informed that while the stage is taken down, those red chairs that the general authorities sit in are actually kept in cold storage to preserve them until the millennium that's a totally a lie. I'm just making things up, but it's interesting to see the stage this way. You could see the hole, like right behind all of this woodwork, where they all go underneath and behind the organ. And so none of this was up just a few days ago. What do you mean that there's a hole? <laughs> there's like an opening underneath the organ that you can, that they have a bunch of equipment behind. And so they like put all of these things underneath and behind. Okay, so it's basically a storage room where they keep all the other different set pieces. Is that where they keep the chairs and the podium and whatnot? The podium actually is underground, so they pull the podium up during conference. I don't know what to say to that. That's really cool. Um, Is it? (laughs) I don't know how much detail you know about this, but I'm just thinking of like this ominous hole that the podium (laughs) sinks down into, and then when it's time for conference, it just rises majestically. But That's a good way to envision it, so we say go with that. Okay, we're going to go with that. <laughs> wow. It almost feels like a, a spaceship. A 747 Boeing airplane could actually fit right where we're sending it. Really? That's, that's uh, quite enormous. Um, 
I see back here there are like these, it looks almost like um, one-way mirror type thing, like an interrogation room. What goes on behind <laughs> that wall there? Definitely not interrogation, but that's three audio-visual rooms. And so that's where they have some translation, live translations going on, but it's mostly where they're just making sure the sound sounds good. So people in other countries that don't speak English, they're listening to it being translated, and their translators are behind that. Some of them. Some of them are over in the church office building. Some are here. Some are in little rooms that we can't see as well. So there's a lot of different places. Some people do it from home. What can you tell us about the organ? The Anything? The organ is actually smaller than the organ in the tabernacle. So it looks larger, but there's a little bit over half of the amount of pipes that are in the tabernacle organ. I had no idea because it does look a lot bigger on TV. Okay, I've heard a rumor that the circle up there above the pipes is just a, a sled, like a winter sled that's been like spray painted gold. Is that true? Yes. That's actually true. Yes. All the workers here refer to it as the sled because it was just spray painted and textured for the organ. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> it's a sled. We're not exactly a poor church, but I like the frugalness <laughs> there. That's that's great. All right, where are we going to next? We're going to go to a really cool gallery that shows some portraits of the leaders who speak in this meeting. Okay, let's do it. Wait, let's do a quick... Oh, hello, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, sisters, we're going to do a quick comfort test. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> you know... It could be worse. I'd say almost like movie theater seating. Your, your basic, you know, AMC theater. Okay, let's go. When was this place built, sisters? It was built from 1997 to 2000. Okay, cool. I've heard the story that uh, when it was being built, the construction was being delayed because of bad weather. And President Hinckley at the time, Gordon B. Hinckley, apparently said you guys worry about the building and I'll worry about the weather. Hey, that's President Hinckley. And so this is the gallery of our church leaders and so we have a side-by-side -side representation of Jesus Christ and his 12 apostles and our modern day prophet and our 12 apostles today. And so these are some of the men that speak at conference every six months. And then over here as well, there's some more paintings, or they're not paintings, they're pictures, of others of the church leaders that some of them speak during conference as well. All right, now where are we headed? We are heading to our Book of Mormon gallery. All right, where each page of the Book of Mormon is on display. We wish. That would be a really cool gallery. If it was, you know, the original manuscript, that'd be great. Are these, uh, like, the original paintings? Yeah. Yes. Almost oh. all of the paintings in the conference center are original. There's just a few that we will show you at the very end of the tour, and some of those are not originals. Okay, so if anybody wants to do a Greg Olson heist or something like that, this is the place to go. Yes. Man, there are so many sister missionaries here. That's amazing. <laughs> right, sisters. There are about 164 of us currently right now. On Just Temple Square. On Temple Square, okay. Wow. That one's in the Book of Mormon, uh, in the blue, you know, missionary basic copy of the Book of Mormon. Jared and Brother Jared and, and the Stones, okay. And we've got Nephi and the Liahona. Oh, and these are, uh, these are, oh, what's his name? Arnold Freeberg. Arnold Freeberg. Originals. Wow. This is the original beefy Nephi. These paintings were completed in the 1950s, and fun little story is the primary president at the time, which she was just the young, the leader over the children of the church, really wanted these stories to be depicted from the Book of Mormon so that people could visualize and be able to understand the stories. Mm -hmm. And she just loved the Book of Mormon so much that she knew that even these little tiny primary kids could enjoy it too. And so she ended up selling some of her property to commission all of these paintings. And she unfortunately passed away before she saw even a single sketch. So you're telling me that these were all painted for primary children. Well, those primary children got more than they bargained for. I will say that. <laughs> even the 
adults did because we appreciate the paintings and being able to learn the stories. And just to be clear, uh, Freeberg's method was that he wanted to portray these characters physically as a symbol of how they were spiritually. So like super beefy dude, spiritually, spiritually powerful guy. Was actually someone who he based off of a real life person who actually helped in his family's conversion story. And so when he saw this man a few years later, he just saw him just so spiritually strong and that's how he wanted to convey a Benedai. That's really interesting. I love the Jaguars. No, that are those Jaguars? Are Jaguars black? So we've got Ammon over here looking very BYU ready, <laughs> except for the shirt. Captain Moroni, Stripling Warriors. And uh, this is the Waters of Mormon. Samuel the Lamanite. And, oh, the culminating event of the Book of Mormon the coming of Christ. We have a really, really pretty painting we'll go to after this gallery that shows you a even better um, depiction of Christ. Yeah, you're right. This one's only so-so. We'll get, we'll get to the good one. Yeah, it is very small. All right, where are we going now? So we will actually take you to see the largest painting in the conference center, which is another depiction of Christ coming to the Americas. Awesome. Is that the one we passed up here? All right, here we are. So, this is the crowning event in the Book of Mormon, when Christ mm -hmm. visits the people in the Americas. Mm -hmm. And we love stopping at this painting along the tours, because as my companion mentioned, we get guests coming from all around the world. And this story in the Book of Mormon shows us that God is a loving Heavenly Father, and He loves His children in every nation of the world. And that He sent His Son to, you know, visit and to minister to each and every one of them too. Yeah. And so we love this depiction because there's so many people and there's so many different reactions. And really, Christ atoned and loves every single one of them, no matter what, no matter where they've been, no matter their past, they always have a spotless future as long as they turn to Him. What's your favorite part of this painting? I think my favorite part is the little girl. She's really, really close to the Savior. And I know in the scriptures we read a lot about becoming as a child, becoming meek, submissive, humble, and really that child is really ultimately where we want to be. We want to be as close to the Savior as we can be. So I think each day we're striving more and more to become like a child. Yeah, and I think my favorite part is just remembering what happened right before Christ came. They experienced days of darkness and tumblings and tur rumblings and turmoil and to just see all the different reactions on these people's faces and to know that you know they must have experienced so much fear but as soon as Christ came into the picture, as soon as they let Christ into their lives, they're able to experience so much peace, so much peace, so much joy. And to just see, you know, all of them, or most of them are in the act of praising their God. Most of them are in the act of just, you know, welcoming the Savior and, you know, just showing that humility, as my companion mentioned, that meekness as that child. I just love that the Book of Mormon is evidence that God loves all of his children, right? I mean, no, nothing against those, you know, in, in the East, but, you know, the Bible is, is coming from a certain geographic area. What about everybody else? And I love that the Book of Mormon is here just saying, no, he, he came here too. He's the savior of the entire world. So if you haven't read that, that book, it's a good one. I recommend it. 3 Nephi 11 is the best chapter. Yes. Definitely. And on a more serious note, I just love this guy here with the pot. He reminds me of the guy from Hercules, the Disney movie. He's got his pottery store and Hercules destroys it. And this guy's just like, horrible things have happened here over the last few days, but I have this pot. <laughs> this is the last thing I have and it is coming with me everywhere I go. That's true. Maybe he was taking it as a gift to the savior. It could be, it could be. All right, where are we headed to next? We are headed to our statue of Christ, and so it's not the original one or the one, the bigger statue that we have or had in the, in the visiting center, but it's one of our smaller replicas of it. So this is the Christus statue, and this is probably, I mean, every spot in the conference center is our favorite, but we love this spot because everything here truly points us back to the Savior. Everything within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is centered on Christ, is centered on His gospel and His doctrine and how we can ultimately come closer to Him. 
Mm -hmm. And so we love being able to bring people here from all nations of the world because we do get visitors from all around the world and to you know, bring them to the statue and have them ponder and reflect you know, who, who Jesus Christ is to them and what he has done for them because we testify that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, that his peace is offered to everybody in the world, no matter where they are, what they've done. Um, Christ is our savior and he loves us all. I love the uh, scripture there at the base of the statue. I don't know if you can see it, but it's Matthew 11:28. It just says, come unto me. And that's really, you know, that's a good summary of what, of what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about, right? It's hard for me when people talk about how you know, we worship a different Jesus or, uh, or we don't, we're not Christians, you know, and come to the conference center and look around and, and, uh, he's, he's the center of everything we're trying to do here. We do believe different things than other, other Christians when it comes to Jesus and that's okay. But, uh, but hopefully without a doubt, people recognize that, you know, we're trying to emulate this guy. And I guess a little fun fact, if you aren't a member of the church, you aren't very familiar with the church, this is the symbol of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So it's just a beautiful resurrected Christ. And so ultimately, we are invited to come unto him, to follow him, and to become like him. Love it. Okay, where are we going to next? We're going to go upstairs and show you a beautiful model of the Salt Lake Temple. Ooh, that sounds fun. More sister missionaries at every turn. If you haven't noticed that sister is actually from france bonjour <laughs> my wife served her mission in paris plug for my wife Aww. i'm shocked by how many oh hi sisters <laughs> two companionships over there actually okay we're at the level two going to level three the observation deck see more spaceship stuff temple room and there's a lot of artifacts taken from our temple so a lot of the older furniture we have a, a piece of granite taken from the same quarry as this temple granite was taken from was this how long ago was this taken from the quarry do you know it's been here for at least over 13 months i know that <laughs> that's how long you've been here right okay good to know all right what, what else do we have what is this stuff here these are just some beautiful things that were inside of the temple. And so lots of just little pieces of the temple with different samples, a door key. It's pretty unique to see specific things that were used in the Salt Lake Temple. So this was the key that was actually used to go through the front door? Yes, to go through some of the doors in the temple. And so it's just so cool to see how they had they paid such attention to all the little tiny details. That's a pretty cool skeleton key. I think there should be some folklore surrounding that, but we'll get to that later. What is this? So this is one of the altars that was taken from our, the inside of the Salt Lake Temple. So was this an original? Yes, this is the original. Still in very good shape. So I guess, well, we'll talk about the temple later, but you can see it out the window. Don't take it for granite. <laughs> we love that. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So this is an exact replica of what the Salt Lake City Temple looked right before construction hit. And so we are able to show guests a little bit of the inside. And we believe that temples in any religion is a very sacred place. And temples for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, it's a sacred place of worship. Yeah. And so in temples, we're able to participate in ceremonial events that just draw us closer to our Savior, help us learn more about Him. And as we learn more about Christ, we learn more about ourselves and who we are as divine children of such a loving Father in heaven. And so the temple is a really special place for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to worship. And there are over 260 um, around the world that are either announced, which means they will be built soon, or they're under construction, or they're open for members to go. This is my favorite temple around the world, largely because of the symbolism on the outside, which you don't see quite as much in modern, more modern temples. But all right, where are we going to next? really pretty um, gallery of some more paintings of temples that are actually around the world. So you'll get to see a few pictures of some other temples and how they don't all look the same, which is something that's kind of unique. They fit into exactly where they're placed in the world. Yeah. And that's because we believe that temples are the house of God here on earth. And it's nice to know that they fit into the cultures and the areas that they're in so that when members go inside, they're able to just feel like it's home and they're able to be familiar with the atmosphere of it. 
So a lot of these paintings are also depictions of some of the earlier temples that we had back in Nauvoo and in Kirtland, Ohio. And so some of those are just more depictions of those temples. How long has this gallery been here? Not too long, actually. And so it was, it used to be a gallery of um, our apostles, our modern day apostles, but it was changed within the past few years into our temple room. That's really cool. So I guess fitting the theme of temples, is this Christ, what does this have to do with temples? This is it, Christ, Christ in Bethesda. How does this fit into the theme of this room? I think really just how he healed and loved every single person that he was around. And so what's beautiful about temples is we're able to go and feel kind of a refuge from the storms of life. We're able to leave all the baggage all the way on our shoulders as we enter into the temple and really get to draw closer to the Savior. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I can testify to that as a missionary. I was in a very dangerous part of the world, and but there was a temple in, in one of the cities that I was in. and. It was amazing how you cross, just, we just crossed the temple gates and that weight of, you know, the, the turmoil going on in that city just disappeared. Temples are very special places. Okay, we are now on the rooftop of the conference center and of course you have the Salt Lake Temple under construction here. Talk to us. Yes, yeah, so right now they're in the process of earthquake proofing our Salt Lake City Temple. And so we got a lot of questions when they first started this project of why are they earthquake proofing it? Does Utah even get earthquakes? And the answer is yes, Utah runs along the Wasatch fault line. And so they're really just strengthening the temple. This is one of the oldest temples and it's a very historic temple that took 40 years to build. And so we want to preserve it so it can stand a lot longer and so that more and more members and more work can be done inside of the temple. And so it's an exciting project that's taking place. Yes, and it, we don't know when it will exactly be done, but we know it will be a couple more years until it's finished with the construction work. It was uh, Brigham Young, wasn't it, who said that he wanted this temple to last through the millennium, right? Yeah. Are we on track for that? We yeah. think so, yes. It's looking pretty good. It it's interesting to see kind of the guts of Temple Square, I guess you could say, what's underneath the surface. Um, and it's just kind of fun to think of, you know, the last time that these kind of foundation stones were seeing the light was probably a very long time ago. So now the final part of our tour we are going to just go into the gardens. They have gardens on the roof of the conference center. Uh, sisters, do you know how much all of this dirt and vegetation weighs on the roof? We don't know exactly how much it weighs, but we do know that they use a very special type of dirt, um, something along the lines of crushed shale, so that it's significantly lighter than just dirt. It's a architectural wonder. Oh yeah, crossing the red tape. Exclusive access to the tours that they give the public. And so something that we love is all throughout the building you're learning so much about Jesus Christ and what we have to offer. But something that's nice is they wanted a place for peaceful reflection. Just a place where we're able to just sit back and to connect with God and we know oftentimes that's done in nature. How often is the rooftop open to the public? Just for just visitors or do you have to be on a tour to come up here you don't have to be on a tour but you have to have sisters take you back here so it's not open for anyone to just wander back and be wherever they want just because there's access of like going down below and things like that so they just want to keep everybody safe and able to be seen so essentially if you were just wandering in off the street you would just need to ask some sisters if they could take you up here yeah that's cool but we love this part of the conference center just because all of the vegetation you see are actually native plants to Utah. And so this is kind of up in the mountains where you see lots of trees and things. And then over on the other side, it's more the valley side. And so there's a lot of little shrubs and grasses. So, so there's a theme to the garden is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And even this, it's usually a water fountain and if water flows from all four of the little sprouts right here. And this is also directly over the pulpit. And so it's very significant in the aspect of, we believe that, you know, this gospel or the words of Christ will go forth to all four corners of the world. And so just kind of representing of that knowledge, just going forth. 
and this gospel shall be preached unto every nation and kindred and tongue and people. I guess that's kind of a summary of what you just said, but that's the inscription from Doctrine and Covenants on the wall there with images of people from every nation, tongue, and people. And it's beautiful over there as well, because if you stand close to the mural, you can see yourself in it as well. So everybody's kind of a part of this whole beautiful gospel that God has given to each of us. And so as you walk over there, if anyone comes and visits, you can really see yourself in that picture as well. That's really special. We're all just kind of part of the same puzzle. Mm -hmm. So right now, we are directly over the auditorium. Mm -hmm. Kind of freaks me out a little bit, but that's really cool. <laughs> okay. And this is where we end our tour, is that correct? It is. Any final thoughts for us? I think really just the conference center is all centered on Christ and everything that we do here, the general conference that happens twice a year, the Book of Mormon gallery, the statue of Christ, the temple, everything directs us back to him. And so really it's a beautiful place to worship, to come closer to the Savior and learn more about your personal relationship with him. Yeah. And that's our goal for everybody who comes into the conference center and leave. We want them to know that Jesus Christ loves you, that Jesus Christ is your Savior, and that the peace that we feel here, the peace that Jesus Christ offers, is offered to you all the time. And so that's the main message we try to get across is that you know, you're so loved. This is a special place. You feel uh, a certain sacredness on the grounds. And uh, if you have the chance, please come here. As you saw in the video, there are more than enough sister missionaries waiting here to talk to you about about our faith and about the conference center and uh, October 1st and 2nd is uh, when we'll be having our general conference you can watch online from where whichever part of the world you're at and more than just seeing the architecture and the uh, different features of the building you'll be able to actually hear what is taught in the building and uh, that's really special and, and important for you to experience so if you have the chance drop in and uh, and join us there uh, it, it's a wonderful opportunity to be here with with you sisters we're very grateful for it thank you so much for taking us through the conference center and uh, I guess I've already asked you for your final thoughts so everyone let us know if you have any uh, questions let us know in the comments and uh, thank you so much for watching it's been fun okay bye <laughs>